blessing of God is so we can bless others. Amen. We have to be blessers of others. Amen. All right, children's church, preschool, you guys are dismissed. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, have a great time over there, guys. The rest of you, go ahead and get your Bibles out. You can, we can start back at our, our foundation text here over in John's Gospel, the 10th chapter. Reading from the 6th verse. John's Gospel, the 10th chapter. In the 6th verse. Praise God. Hallelujah. This parable Jesus spake unto them, but they understood not which things were he was spaking. He had spake unto them. Now he's talking about, you know, the porter, the sheep hearing the voice, and the, you know, the, the sheep coming in and out, and they not hearing who he is, and that kind of stuff. And then Jesus says in verse 7, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. And I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And uh, if they go in and out and find pasture. And the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Everybody say glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are, we are excited that uh, Jesus tells us he's the door. I'm glad he is the door, not the devil. Amen. 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 Good number of says I'm the good shepherd. Aren't you glad Jesus is the good shepherd? Yep. Amen. Amen. I am. I'm excited that Jesus is the good shepherd. He's not a bad shepherd. He's a good shepherd. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, give, and that the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. All right. And so we started here. And, you know, and um, we started in verse 10. The thief cometh not but for two to steal, to kill, to destroy. I am come that they may have zo life. Zoe. Life in the absolute sense. Life in the manner that God possesses it. Life the way that God has it. Amen. The life that the Father gave the Son to have in himself, and which the incarnate Son in turn gave to us to have within ourselves. The life of God. Amen. Not just eternal life. It is the very essence of God. His life. When we were born again, I mean, praise God, we were born from life unto death. Amen. Now we became living spiritual beings unto God. No longer suffering, no longer alienated from the covenants of God. We're brought into harmony and union with God through the blood of Jesus Christ and the new birth. Can you say amen? amen. Oh, glory to God. And so he said that he came that we might have that zoe and have it in abundance. Aren't you glad we can have it in abundance? I'm glad we can have it in abundance. Amen. Glory to God. Because I'm telling you, the abundant life, uh, the life that we have in Christ Jesus, the life that we have in God is greater than anything that we could get anywhere else. Amen. Amen. And so, we dealt, we, we talked about this, what did God, what God does to give us. Well, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, destroy. So if it steals, if it kills, if it destroys, guess what? It ain't God. Because he's not the thief. Amen. Jesus said all that came before me were all thieves and robbers. He didn't put himself in that bunch. Did he? So if it steals, it kills, destroys, it's not him. He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, to destroy. I am come. Now, uh, in structure of this particular phrase here, this, this, this verse, uh, it would be a thesis and, and an antithesis. That's, that's, that's a fancy way of saying antithesis, opposite. Okay? And so the thesis is, the thief steals, kills, destroys. There you go. Boom. Who's the thief? No. The devil. No. Amen? Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. Not just life. Not just breathing. But life in the absolute sense, life in the manner that the Father does, Zoe life. Zoe. Amen. Now, Zoe life is redundant, but I, you know, you know, we, we're trying to bring the scripture to you know to give you an understanding. That Greek word carries a stronger meaning than simply, you know, a biological life or you know, whatever. It's it's the life that God possesses. Amen. The very essence of who He is. God is life. God is life. God is love. The three themes of First John is God is life. God is life. God is love. He is life. And Jesus said, I've come that you might have not just living on the earth and be able to breathe until they put you in a casket and put you in the ground. God's life. So that. And have it to the full or abundantly. Okay? And so Jesus said, the, the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. I'm coming you might have life. And so he has set in, in diametric opposition one to the other that stealing, killing, and destroying is opposite of the life of God. It doesn't come from God. Every good, John wrote in his epistle, every good and every perfect gift coming, coming down from the, I'm sorry, James did. Every good and every perfect gift coming down from the Father above in whom there is no variableness in the shadow of turning. Amen. 
Every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father above, and whom there is no variable, no shadow of turning. Every good and every perfect gift. Yes. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not bad stuff. Well, you just never know what God's trying to work out in your life. <laughs> the devil's trying to kill you. He's trying to steal from you. He's trying to destroy you. Amen. Jesus came to give you life. Amen. Come on now. Jesus. Glory. Paul wrote to the church of Rome and said that the law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus overcomes the law of sin and death. Amen. Amen. The life of God's more powerful than death. Amen. That is when a man or woman comes to Christ and says, I receive you as thy Lord. Then you know, the Father, Jesus said, I and your Father stand at the door and knock. If any man will open that door, I and my Father will come in. They will sup with him and make our bow with him. What happens? When God's life enters into your spirit, the law of sin and death is overcome. Amen. Amen. Glory. It's eradicated. Amen. You're born again. Glory. Amen. <laughs> From death unto life. Amen. The nature of the Father takes over. You're a new creation. Paul wrote to the church of Corinth in the second book. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Verse 18 Amen. starts out and says this, and all things are of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus told Philip, they said, show us the Father, it suffices us. He said, have I been to this one with you? Do you not know? He that's seen me has seen the Father. So when I go back and study the ministry of Jesus, I see the Father. Amen. I never see him put cancer on anybody. Amen. I never see him destroying the whole town. I never see him, you know, making people sick. Amen. And he never goes up to people and then takes all the big pick pops, you know, supernaturally. All the money comes over to me in my account. He's not stealing from them. He doesn't have a sword out. There's a new book, there's a new cartoon out called Jesus Free in which he cuts people's heads off. So that's Muhammad, not Jesus, folks. Amen. They're, trying, they're trying to rewrite history for kids. Amen. The devil is evil. Amen. And it's going on all over. People hate God. Are you here? You're going home. Amen. They hate God. They hate his covenant people. That's all right. We got the goods. Amen. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. That's right. He can stick his ugly head up, but we got the greater one in us. Amen. 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 Jesus did, when, when they came against Jesus, I remember that song they used to sing in church about 30, about 40, 50, well, 50 years ago at least. You know, he could have called 10,000 angels. When he was on the cross, he could have called legions of angels down. And he could have wiped out the Roman Empire. But he didn't come to kill, still destroy. He came to give life and give it to the full. And in order for that life to be passed on to humanity, he had to go to the cross, become sin for us who knew no sin. Hallelujah. And that's what Paul went to the church of Corinth. He that's in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 18 starts out. And then he goes to verse 21 and says, And um, he who knew no sin was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Righteous old King Jimmy for brought into right standing with. Well, the only way you can be in right standing with God, mm -hmm. you got to be born of God. Amen. You got to have His nature in you. Amen. Amen. Why? Because we don't go to a priest and get our sins absolved. We don't go to a priest and have him, an earthly priest, and shed blood. That's the old covenant. Right. But Jesus has been made a new and a better way. And he entered in once with his own blood, having obtained Amen. eternal redemption for us. Right. Amen. Amen. There's no priest that can absolve you of your sin on the earth. Only the master. Amen. 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 They misinterpret scripture. You know, whose sins you remit are remitted those who... In other words, if you hold people in captivity, you're, you're holding that there. But it's, it's, you're not the forgiver of sin. Right. You don't get to do that. Jesus did it. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we talked about, you know, this abundant life being passed on. God doesn't give us sickness, disease, calamity, destruction. That's not him. That's not his path. That's not the way he works. What does he give you? Well, we talked about that, you know, Psalm 
103 verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that's within me. Bless his holy name, forgetting not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Thank God for redemption. Can you say thank God thank for redemption? God for thank God he forgives you of your iniquity. Thank God he forgives you of your sin. Hallelujah. That does not mean that because you're under grace, you can just go out and do any stinking thing you want to do. And go, I'm forgiven. I'm under grace. All that shows me is the shallowness of your relationship with God. Right. If that's what you're thinking. And stop preaching that stupid stuff. Then we're not trying to put them in captivity. They got to follow the law. They got to you know, go do ceremonial washings and all this kind of stuff. But you just can't go live any way you want to live. Right. And it's okay with God. Because it's not okay. He came to set you free from that junk. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't do them in the first place. Because you want to be free from that junk. And you got preachers up there telling you because it sells lots of books and keep makes them famous. It's okay. God don't care. You can go out there and you can run around with all the women you want to. You can be homosexual. You can abort babies. Uh, come on now. Amen. You can smoke dope, shoot up, do whatever you want to do. It don't matter with God. God loves you just like you're in your only way sure forgive before you ever do it. Amen. Brother Hayes, you have a saying. I'd rather hear a donkey brain at 10 barn at midnight and hear such uh, junk as that. Amen. I think I understand what he meant. Hallelujah. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, thank God who heals our diseases, amen. amen. Who redeems our life from destruction, I thank God I'm redeemed, amen. amen. Who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Amen. So that the youth is renewed like the eagle, thank God for good amen. things. Amen. And he satisfies thy mouth with good things. Amen. If you're going out, and running around and doing all the things the Bible says don't do. You're not satisfied with the good things of God. Amen? Amen. Now, um, I went and saw family this week, weekend, so Friday and Saturday. And, you know, you're, out, you're eating, you're out eating, and, you know, you eat, you're, you're satisfied. Don't you want dessert? Don't you want another roll? Don't you want, no, I'm, I'm, I don't need anything else. I'm good. Amen. Now. Ask me in between meals, and you know, and, you know put a piece of chocolate. Yeah. No, I, I don't do, I don't do desserts anymore. I mean, I, I have very, 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 very few these days. I mean, I went almost a year without any. Okay, uh, but it's it's, it's 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 such a rare event. And when I do, I regret it. I go, oh gosh, I just really had me taken a bite. That which I had me taken a bite because that just it just didn't work with me anymore. It just kind of turns my stomach. And I, I didn't think well, that's that's terrible. Well, I was addicted. I mean, you know, my, my, I said this one time, my, my blood was pancake syrup. There was so much sugar in there. I mean, I just pricked the finger and put it on there. That's, that's all I need. I got there's enough sugar in there to keep me happy. And they go, that's crazy. Okay, anyway. But, you know, there was, there was a time you offered me a, you offered me a fudge and, you know, seafoam candy and pecan pie in between bills or, you know, all, all in between. I mean, I'm in there chomping away. But then when I eat, man, I'm satisfied. I don't have to have that. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. When you get satisfied, you don't need the other stuff. Right. Uh, every time at Christmas now, they ask what you want for Christmas. I'm like, right. I have no idea because I'm satisfied. Everything I have need of, I've got. Yeah. There's nothing that I have need of I don't have. And about anything I want... Other than, you know, maybe a, a, a new car or something like that, I have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, maybe if I had a brand new 2020 Jeep Grand Cherokee loaded up to the gills or something like that with a V8 on it. Welcome to that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jeff's just waiting for one place. When you got the last name Gill, yeah, he's, he wants to put the gills in my car. No, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't even show yourself the food. He who right devised the pastor's words. Receive it. But I'm, you know, I'm like, and I'm not dissatisfied with the vehicles I got now. So it's not like I, oh, I got to have a new car. I got to have a new car. Yeah, I got to prove I'm prosperity. I don't have to prove anything. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, see, here's the thing. Especially when we come to get the prosperity and having possessions and stuff. Remember when they came to Jesus and they went and got the food? And the Samaritan woman came to him and he ministered to her. And when they showed up, he wasn't hungry. And they're like, we just 
walked five miles and got my food while I was hungry. And I had to meet, you know, not a mm -hmm. relationship with God, following God, and doing the will of God is satisfaction. Yes. Amen. You can't be satisfied with God and want to go do all the other stuff that the Bible says you shouldn't do and then try to hide under a subject called grace or something while you're doing it. You can't do it. Hello. Now, is God's grace and mercy available for those who mess up? Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. No doubt about it. And God's not going to cast you out and stomp you and cook you with fire and light you and bolts from heaven and that kind of stuff. No. But don't sit around and try to find a way to do stuff and hide under a subject and let preachers use that because you're going to buy the taste because you feel so good about yourself. The love of our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. There's a reason your heart will condemn you when it knows it's not in the right place with God. And it causes you not to have confidence before God. Well, what do you do? You repent, and you get it straight, and you get that right. Amen. And the Father's got his arms open the whole time anyway. Amen. He's on the front porch looking for you. Amen. Hello? He's not out with a big baseball bat. When I find that rascal, I'm going to nail him. No, he's not. He's not. And when you stick your head, it'd be like mole in the hole, you know? Boom, 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 boom. The little game, the yeah. arcade game. Whack -a, -whack, -a -whack, -a -whack, -a -whack, whack a mole or something. Yeah. God's not, you're not a mole and God's not whacking moles. Okay? He's not waiting for you to stick your head up where you see him so he can whack you one. He's waiting for you to come boldly to the throne of grace. And that's where, yes. Grace is beautiful, and grace is wonderful, and the grace of God is amazing. Yes. And when you come boldly to the throne of grace, not knowing, I didn't do anything wrong. Amen. No, you come boldly to the throne of grace with confidence knowing this. He loves you, he forgives you, he restores you. And you can come into that presence and be restored. So your conscience condemns you no longer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Looks like we made it on TV here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, everybody. Amen. Glory to God. Glad you guys are out there. Amen. I'm going to invite everybody. If y'all want to invite folks to watch the last bit, that's good. I'm going to share. I'm going to post. I'm going to say now. And we are out there. Glory to God. And I'm going to like me. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like me. Hallelujah. Gotta love yourself. You gotta love yourself. <laughs> Love the Lord that God all the heart, soul, and strength. The other day you love yourself. So I got to love me too. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so um, we talked we talk about righteousness is good. Healing is good. You know, prosperity is good. Let's talk about it real quick this morning. Hallelujah. As I did a recap right then, all that recap was a little added extra stuff in there. Listen, I sat in the classroom with Brother Hayden for an entire year, you know, and he taught, he taught us three, three uh, days a week, um, one, one marking period. There were eight-week, mark, nine-week marking periods, and then two days a week the next, all alternate between the first and second year students. And so we had him for half a year, all five days a week combined. That's how it worked out. Kind of worked out. So you end up with a whole full semester of having him every day. And you know what? He would start on Mark 11, 23, 24. Every, every single day. day. Every day. Yep. And recap. Yep. And then he'd get along. He'd go, and then all of a sudden, he comes back and starts, he's telling something. He goes, and, and he goes, now y'all thought I forgot where I was yesterday. And he picked right up where he was yesterday. Right up. Right. How do you do that? All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a, you know, the Holy Spirit can pull something out every time we recap something. Right. Give you a little bit different. Amen? Amen. But 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound of mind. Amen. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Amen. He didn't call us to be fearful. He didn't call us to be defeated. He didn't call us to be cast down. He called us to be a soundness of mind. His word working in you. His word working in your mind. Amen. His word turns the tables for your life. Amen. 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 Paul wrote to the church at Rome and said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Conform comes from a Greek word that means to be molded, much like you do jello. Now, I'm not, most of y'all should know by now that jello don't come in that little 
you know, wiggly form. If you go to the grocery store and pick up the little cup, it was a gelatin with flavoring in it at one time. Powder. Mixed with water, boiled in water, poured into a mold. And you know, if you remember years ago, jello used to have castle molds, all kinds of molds you could pour your jello in and make stuff for kids. That's ungodly. That is. <laughs> Some yeah, pretty well. Fruit cocktail and <laughs> jelly, that's just ungodly. I'm going to tell you, it's of the devil. Yes, I've been, that's right. I hated it. Like, well, why do you want to ruin a good thing? You know? But, um, when you take the, you, know, you put the powder in, you put the water in, you boil it, and you pour it into that mold, it's liquid. Then you keep going back for several hours, and it's still liquid. And then eventually, it starts to get that little skim on top. And you got to let it sit all night, or, or hours and hours. And then you can take that thing and turn it over and dump it out, and it comes out and it's shaped just like that mold. And that's what the Greek word conform means. To be fashioned, to be molded according to the world. The world has a world, the mold. It has a world view. It has a mold it's trying to fit everybody into. Yeah. Right. Anti-God. Right. Everything about what the world's trying to do is anti-God. And people say, no, we're for freedom of religion. No, you're not for freedom of religion. That's a lie. You know it's a lie. You're out to try to destroy Christianity. Amen. We know it. We're not stupid. You know? This socialism, socialism is a step to where next step to communism, and the whole purpose of communism is to eliminate God from the dialogue. Amen. The state is God. The religion of communism is secular humanism. Which is recognized by the IRS as a 501c3 non-profit religious organization, by the way. Human wow. Humanism, Humanist Manifesto 1 and Humanist Manifesto 2, they accept humanists, secular humanists as 501c3 nonprofit religious organizations. Wow. <laughs> so, by de facto, our public schools are enforcing and indoctrinating a religion, a state, yeah. state enforced religion, secular humanism, atheism being forced and indoctrinating our children in school under the guise that you can't you gotta have separation of church and state. Yeah. So the devil works evil. Oh you hear you're going home. Well, where was it? For that little side journey. Huh? Yeah, molded. And so he said, be not conformed. Don't be shaped. Don't be molded. Don't be fashioned according to this world. But be transformed. Now, you, you, I mean, you said this before. That's that Greek word is metamorpho. M-E-T-A-M-O-R-P-H-O-O. -O, metamorpho. Which is where we get metamorphosis. What's a metamorphosis? Caterpillar to a butterfly. Tadpole to a butterfly. To a bullfrog. From <laughs> <laughs> caterpillar to a bullfrog. That'd be a real metamorphosis. Yeah, that'd be a real metamorphosis. That'd be a complete species change. Yeah. <laughs> Your mind, by renewing it to the world. So be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we renew our mind? We sanctify it by the washing of the water of the word. Yeah. James says, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Now, again here, that word save is uh, sozo. Mm -hmm. And the word soul is suke. It's not pneuma. It's not your spirit. We know your spirit gets saved through the new birth. We know according to Ephesians, the first chapter, that your body is marked and with a seal on it for an, uh, an ultimate redemption. That when this, when the Lord shall appear, this they which are dead in Christ are, are, shall rise and shall be changed in the moment and twinkling of an eye. And this corruption shall put an incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. And when we change, we'll put on a different body. But your mind, people say, well, you didn't do anything about it. Yes, he did. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to sozo, make sound your soul, your suke. The seat of the mind, the will, the emotions, and your intelligence. The word of God in grasp. If you're a Star Trek person, you know it's like the board, they assimilate you. Lower your defenses, we will assimilate you. We will add your distinctive biological, your biological distinctive to our collective. Okay? God's word adds your mind it, it grasps it. It takes over. As you feed on the Word of God, it reprograms your thinking. Amen. It undoes stupidity. Yeah. Oh, you know, I do say sometimes you can't fix stupid, but God can. Yeah. So 
Okay? I mean, you see some people say, you know, this this new congressman will say stuff out there, and you're thinking, can anybody be that stupid? No, but they can be that demonic. They can be emissaries of the devil. When you hear you're going home. But, but Paul wrote Timothy said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. I didn't give you, a, you know, I gave you a spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. Amen. The word of God fixes your head. Amen. It fixes how you think. Amen? Amen? So that you're no longer carnal. What's carnal? Flesh rule. Flesh dominated. Fleshy. Maybe, see, this is what Christians come up and say. I can drink, smoke, run around, do all I want to do, and I'll, it's okay. God, under grace, you're carnal. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And Paul wrote to the church, and he talked about those who had divisions among them, and said, are you not carnal? And walk, and, and walk is, uh, and, and the, I think that King James says, and walk is men. But, you know, I think that five says, well, no, the, the King James says mere men, and I think that five says mere unchanged men. Mere unchanged men. See, carnality walks as an unchanged person. E.W. Kenyon said uh, in his writings, well, this is an excellent statement, it's, it's one that you ought to listen to and hear right now. The man or woman that does not renew their mind to the word of God will imitate a sinner. As a believer, they will act like sinners. Because their mind had not been changed. They're staying conformed to this world. Okay? So we got 1 Corinthians 3.3. 3, and it says, Are you not carnal? Whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Mere empire says mere unchanged men. Mere unchanged men. What was the purpose of the new birth? Was it transform to change us? The Word of God wants to transform our thinking so that we line up with how we've been what we've been changed into. We used to sing that little chorus. I got something on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Amen. Yeah. Paul writes to the church and says, put off the old man, put on the new man, which is created after, created after God in righteousness and true holiness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Our minds need to be renewed to the Word of God. How do I renew my mind? Study the Bible. Read. Let the Holy Spirit, the teacher of the church, reveal scripture to you. But you've got to feed on it. Amen. I need some vitamin D in my diet. Then take it. <laughs> like, like the doctor going to the doctor and saying you have a vitamin D deficiency. You need vitamin D. You go out and you buy a big jar of vitamin D supplements. And put it on your bedroom uh, bedroom dresser. And you walk by it every day and look at that vitamin D. That fixes vitamin D deficiency. And you never open it. And you never take one. <laughs> and you do that day after day. But it's there. And then eventually it collects dust on the top. You go back to the doctor for you know, some kind of checkup later. They go, you still have a vitamin D deficiency. Did you get vitamin D? Yeah, I got it. Got it at home sitting on my dresser. Are you taking it? Well, no, I hadn't opened it up. But I've got it. It's sitting right there. Thousand milligrams. You know, approved by the, the other, the, the uh, vitamin approval specialist that it's, it's pure and, you know, taking and, and properly done. And if you told a friend that, they say, you stupid. He would say, you're stupid. Take the vitamin D. If you don't take it, we'll do you any good. And they'll let that same person let their Bible sit on their, camp, their desk. And they'll never open it. And they'll say, You're, I'm a Christian. Well, why are you at? Did you have a Bible? Yeah, I got yeah, oh, yeah, I got five. Got my name printed on it. Even got one of them big family Bibles, big enough to chuck a mule. <laughs> you know? Open it up to the picture of Jesus with the lamb in his arm and the staff. Oh, you got it on my table there in the living room. Everybody come in. Oh, they're a Christian. They got that big, they got that big family Bible sitting there with a picture of Jesus there in the middle. Now, I only, I only saw the white Jesus. I never saw the other Jesuses. Because we had a white family Bible. Hello? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Never pick it up. 
woman got in church one time and prophesied Amen. and said, yay. And went on and on and on. And she said, as I was with, um, as I was with uh, Moses, you know, not Moses, who was it she said? As I was with Abraham when we crossed, when I led them out of Egypt, and as I was with Abraham in the wilderness, as I was with Abraham when we led them across the Red Sea, I'll be with thee. She sat down. Everybody's kind of looking. And they sat in the bench. She stood back up and said, Yay, the Lord hath made a mistake. It was Moses. <laughs> True story. Wow. <laughs> okay then. No, the Lord didn't make a mistake. You got excited. And I don't mock the gifts. I believe in the gifts of spirit. We prophesy. We believe in the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. But when just because you put a yay on it and make a sound that Elizabethan doesn't mean that's God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, I, I heard Ben Kinsler. Remember, anybody remember who Ben Kinsler was? He was the African-American guy that was, that was uh, Pat Robinson's co-host on the 700 Club for years. Yeah. Chambers? Back years ago on the 700 Club on, you know, uh, CBN Network. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, I, I heard him speak one time. He said, you know what, man? If you speak job, job, God speaks job. Mm -hmm. If you speak Spanish, God can speak Spanish. He can communicate with you in a way you understand. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Take the word of God and then grab you'll begin to think like him. Even if, it, even if your language is, you know, Spanish or French or German or job. Okay? But God wants you to have a sound mind and wants you to be walking in harmony with His will. Mm -hmm. So that you can rightly discern the will of God. So we receive a meekness, the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul, that you may prove was that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Amen. What's He saying? Feelings don't confirm the will of God. Amen. That's right. Oh, I got a goosebump. I got goosebumps in church. I've had two. Yeah. I've had. I'll never forget the first time that Brother Hagen walked on the platform and meeting, meeting that I was actually present again. My first day at Raymond. He came walking out, and I got chills up my spine. Man, he walked in that morning. But I've been around people in darkness and got chills. And they, wonder, they put on the, uh, Blair, the Blair Witch Project on television, and I got chills. Well, oh, God. <laughs> but I got chills. Yeah. They were multiplying. <laughs> I mean, I felt like John DeVolta. Wow! All right. So chills aren't confirmation. It's the, God, it's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Are you here? You're gone. Amen. Amen. Well, who are you to judge? I've got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now I don't sit around and go. <laughs> but you know, the Bible says that the prophets speak two or three of the most and let the others judge. That goes over big. Sure. God is the only judge. <laughs> he put the Holy Ghost in us so we could, we could discern things. Yeah. Now, not the gift of discernment. That's something different. And you don't have the gift of judgment when you sit around and go, I determined that you're not this and you're not that. That's not what it's about. But when things are going on, you can discern whether it's God or not. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. You don't have to stand up and declare, I say it's not God. You're hard enough. You can discern evil and good. But you've got to have a sound mind to do that. Yeah. Your mind can be messed up. Like I said, if you're, if you're not, if you're not verse, conversing in the Word of God, if you haven't studied the Word of God, if you haven't studied the Bible, and somebody gets up and says some stupid thing, and you can, you can put some King Jimmy on it, it makes it sound real spiritual, you'll be going, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I grew up believing with all my heart that cleanliness was next to God and it was in the Bible. Now, I hate to bust some bubbles here today. If you believe that, it's not in the Bible. <laughs> or, the Lord helps those who help themselves. I knew those were scriptures in the Bible. I knew it. I would quote them as a young, as a young Christian. People would, yeah, where is that, by the way? First imagination. First imagination. <laughs> Book of first opinions. Yeah, imaginations or opinions. You know, that's one of those apocryphy books. One of those hidden books. That's why it's hidden. <laughs> Amen? So I forgot there's a third one. The Lord helps us to help themselves. You know, godliness is cleanliness. cleanliness and there's another way I always quoted that, that, like, that was Bible. And it wasn't Bible. 
It was pure speculation. Just we thought that sounded good. And we went, well, if we don't know the word of God, then we can't discern things properly. Right. So we need a sound mind. So if the preacher's up preaching stuff, says, I have a thousand fold anointing, you're going, I bind you in Jesus' name. Preachers don't have thousand fold anointings. You will get a thousand fold return on your giving. We have no scripture that says that. Well, Jesus said, give it, shall we give it to you? No. He says some 30, some 60, some even a hundredfold in this life. Well, you know, if you study that out, I mean, you, you know, you, you can you can kind of work it to money, but it's, it really isn't referring to money. Uh, Brother Hagin asked one of the ministers of the preacher and said, uh, have you ever received a thousand, a hundredfold return? And he said, I believe I have. That's going to get a book coming out next month called Hundredfold. He said, he said, he said it by faith. I believe I have. But, but have you? Not, 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 not by faith. Have you ever actually received it? What did Jesus say? He said, give it, shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men, and give it to your bosom. Bring the tithe and offering in the storehouse, prove we can have it. I live under the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on you. You won't have room enough to contain it. Why don't we stay with Bible terminology? Amen. I like Bible terminology. Amen. I can say with confidence that if I tithe and give, God's going to pour out blessings on me that overtake me to the point I don't have room enough to contain them. That's what the Bible says. Amen. But now you got preachers that are going, I got a thousand fold, you know, you got to get, you get a thousand fold return. And I got that anointing. What are you going to do? You got to give to him. Mm -hmm. What happens? People in churches everywhere take all their time, take their money, and give it to the thousand fold anointing because they're going to have more money than they ever knew what to do with it. And they're going to bless their church. See, they're, they're, they're con, they're con into giving up their finances to the thousand fold anointing instead of following God's path. Amen. You need to be like Brown with Medea. The devil's a lie! The devil's a lie! Hello? The devil is a lie. A lot of this stuff is sent by the devil to take money out of churches so they can't do the work of God as a church. Amen. And hoard it up in the hands of people who are living the serious life. Not, not everybody preaches prosperity living that. There's a lot of it going on. And they're living in ways that the 99% of the pastors can't live. Right. But they're coming in with this, 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 this little message that's going to take. We, we see if you got a sound mind, you know the scripture. You can judge that. Well, that's not the Bible. That's not a Bible principle. Now, the Bible does say take care of the workmen who tread the corn. You know, give them double honor. Those who labor word and deed. Okay, I want to bless. See, I believe we should bless ministries who aren't local church tied or you know, constrained to a local church. Pastors are, pretty much. That's their ministry. If you've got a, a, a ministry where you're traveling from church to church and doing business work, you should be supported. I believe that. I believe they should be supported. But you should be supported in the way that you're living in a multimillionaire and the pastors are living and then going to all these churches and, and robbing, the church, robbing the churches so you can live like that under the guise that they're all going to get rich because of it. Right. Amen. Well, if you know the Bible, you'll know, that, you'll know better than that. Amen. Are you here? Amen. I said you'll, you'll know better than that. And so we need to renew our mind to the Word of God. So when somebody says something that sounds spiritual, and see, one of the things about charismatic Pentecost, listen, Pentecost and charismatic are the same thing. One was old, old mainline denomination Pentecostals, the charismatic are the Episcopal, Baptists, Lutherans, Catholics, all those who got baptized in the Holy Ghost in the 60s and came out, and they didn't want really to go back into a denomination because they hated denominationalism, so they formed charismatic churches. You put them in a Pentecostal back, shake them up, dump them out, and they look just like them. Except for the beef high hair. Okay? Except for the hair. Otherwise, they, they look the same. Amen? And we were so moved by feeling. Ooh, that was God. You can get stirred by emotion and think it's God. Right. If your mind's not renewed to the Word of God. That's right. I've heard sermons where people, people were amen and running the aisles and you listen to what the man's saying and you're thinking, my God, that's heresy. <coughs> that's so unscriptural, it's not even funny. But they've been whooped 
dump into a, 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 an emotional frenzy. Now, I believe in prayer. I like prayer. If you, if you, if you ever know anything about my ministry over the years, I'd rather preach any day of the week than teach. I love the preaching anointing. When it comes, it, there's nothing like it. I mean, I've, I've taught, I've been under teaching anointing. I've been under uh, anointing where you're laying hands on the sick. I've been all. There's nothing like the preaching anointing. I just, it just, I, for, for me, I love it. I love the beginning. I'd love to come here every time we get together and just do nothing but preach. As a pastor, I have to teach. That's why I look for sometimes getting to go somewhere else because then I get to preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Of course, uh, later I've been going out and say, where is it? Well, we've got to teach. <laughs> preach. <laughs> but when they preach, Lord, I like that. So you can't, you got to follow him. Amen. I can't preach just because I like the feeling of it. Right. It has to be the anointing. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. And so soundness of mind is important. Your, your mind renewed to the word of God, proving what is a God's good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. It's important so that you, as the believer, can rightly divide the word of truth. And you're not moved one way or the other. You're not a child that's tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Because they come. Amen. Winds of doctrine come. They come to blow you off course. If you're flying an airplane and you know you're you know you, you take off with no wind, you set your gauges and you're flying to California, but a, a, you run into a, a bunch of wind and it moves you four degrees off course, but you don't make any adjustments. Guess what? You ain't there. By the time you get to California, you're gonna be in till you're gonna be down in Mexico somewhere. Just that little bit of degree change will put you down in Mexico somewhere instead of in California. But when that wind comes. You, let, you, you your dial says you're off course. You make the adjustment and readjust and get back. You end up where you're supposed to be. Amen. When we know the word of God, when the winds of doctrine that are out of line with the word of God come and, and try to knock you off, you go to the word of God and put you back on course and you stay where you're supposed to be. Otherwise, you're going to end up way off. Amen. That's why it's important to renew our minds to the word of God. It's important to have that word working in us. Amen? Amen. Transforming our souls. Praise God. Amen. So a sound mind is what? It's good. Amen. Amen. And so we'll pick up uh, next week with deliverance and uh, having our needs met. Maybe get through one of those or two of those. And then we're going to move on to uh, how we actually are able to live the abundant life. How we get to where we can live the abundant life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Amen. So, so praise God. We're going to finish right here. Glory to God. Thank you all for being with us today. Um, uh, you missed it probably because we weren't on. Uh, if you want to be a part of our debt destruction campaign, we ask you to invite you to be part of it. The Lord told us it. Uh, everybody gives $100 a month for a year. We had 10 people. We got that. He says 20 people will get us further down the road. And um, we're supposed to be out of debt by next June. We're already four months ahead of schedule. We'll be out of debt by next February, um, which is just thrilling. Amen. I believe we'll be out of debt before Christmas this year. We're not going into 2020 in debt at all. Hallelujah. I just believe it. Amen. Amen. I just see it while I'm watching it happen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So if you want to join us, we're going to put that up there on, on the screen for you to be a part of that. We'd love to have you be a part. Uh, remember this, that the, uh, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Amen. Amen. The rest of us here today, praise God, it's, last week we didn't do it, we're doing this week, Communion Sunday. So if you will.